Welcome to our lab. So today I'm gonna talk to you about uh, our dual DNP system. We have uh, a gyrotron as a source for our 395 gigahertz microwaves. And at the output, we have between 10 to 50 watts, depending on the regulation we want. From this output microwave power, we direct the beam via a quasi-optic uh, table. In that quasi-optic table, we have a first component being a beam splitter. Uh, which allows the beam to be split into two halves. One half is then being moved towards a MAS uh, DNP instrument. The other half is moving towards a Overhauser DNP instrument. And then each of these uh, branches in terms of the microwave beam have a, a shutter that allows it to be turned on and off without affecting uh, the gyrotron. That means one ex person could be running an experiment on the MAS DNP side without interrupting uh, somebody else uh, doing over Ouser DNP or one wants to turn off, the other wants it on. The second component that we have on both of these uh, uh, branches of microwave beam it are attenuators. And those attenuators allow us to attenuate the beam so for example, we turn on the gyrotron in the morning, we set it at 40 watt output power. The beam splitter, we can get 50-50% on each side. We get 20 watt on the overhauser side, 20 watt on the MAS DNP side. But for example, we might only want to have 10 watts on the MAS DNP, which is usually uh, sufficient for operating uh, the instrument. Uh, or maybe somebody wants to do a enhancement versus power and so then they can attenuate using attenuators uh, along the beam path and then um, before it's uh, being sent out to the probe we have on the MAS side we have a, a power meter that allow us to track how much power is actually going forward to the sample so after the power comes out of the gyrotron move through the beam splitter where we separate the beam into two halves Let's say we follow one side where it goes through a uh, high-speed shutter, which is controlled by the uh, MAS DNP console. Then it's moving through a series of attenuators, which allow us the control of the power. Moving forward, we have a pyrometer that allow us to uh, track down how much power is going to the sample. And in order for the the microwave to be transmitted to the sample, it goes through a very long waveguide. Uh, we have about five meters worth of waveguide or so, all the way to the probe of the MAS system into the sample. The reason why we have this very long waveguide is that uh, the 600 MAS DNP magnet that we use is not shielded, and therefore we need to be as further apart than what normally you would expect uh, for MAS DNP. Looking at the MAS DNP result, we observe NMR spectra of alanine with an enhancement of 128 times using amupol in DNP juice at 100 Kelvin. When looking at the overall other DNP system, we do have uh, a little bit of a different setup. At the beginning, uh, right after the beam splitter, we have the same setup as on the MAS DNP, which is we have a beam uh, shutter that allow us to control the on-off uh, or the gating of the beam uh, from the console. Uh, then we go through a series of attenuators will allow us a control of the beam power. Then we, the beam is transmitted to a lower uh, table where it is then attenuated, uh, sorry, where it is then uh, measured. We can, we can measure the beam power. We then go through a what we call back-to-back -back horn this back-to-back -back horn is designed to act as a filter uh, and if the, if the beam shape was not an ideal Gaussian uh, beam profile, then when going through the back-to-back -back horn, we would have a lot of losses. Uh, more or less, this is to ensure proper propagation uh, into the corrugated waveguide going inside the probe. So this acts as like a, a Gaussian beam shape filter and uh, before we get to the probe we do have a interferometer and that interferometer is used for uh, moving or changing the 
polarization. So we start with a linearly polarized B microwave beam, which we can uh, change to a vertically uh, or horizontally polarized, or we can have a circularly polarized. In our case, we want to set up the uh, interferometer so that we have uh, circularly polarized microwaves. Only uh, half of the microwave power is actually polarizing the, the uh, electron spins. So we might as well just send the part that polarizes the electron spins. So on the other, on the other hand of the uh, quasi-optic bench, which serves both for controlling the beam uh, polarization, controlling the beam power, it also serves to transmit. So we have a series of mirrors that allows the propagation forward with more or less zero losses. And at the end, we have a series of mirrors that can be controlled uh, with micrometer precision uh, to project the beam upward into a corrugated waveguide inside the probe all the way to the sample. In addition to a corrugated waveguide, we've added a little system that allows us to push uh, air into the waveguide in a way that allows us to control the temperature of the sample usually maintaining a lower temperature as the microwave tend to warm up the sample. And in order to do that, we built a window inside uh, these, this piece here, which serve as transmission for the microwave, yet allows the direct of the flow of air to go up in the waveguide. Using an infrared camera, we can visualize the microwave absorption into different solvent. For reference, water is a strong absorber, yielding a strong red infrared image, while paraxylene, a mild absorber, yield a gradient over several centimeters. Finally, exane is completely transparent to microwave at 395 GHz, uh, showing here with a blue color where it does not absorb anything. Making exane a perfect solvent for overhauser DNP at 395 GHz. To conclude this lab tour video, I would like to show the effect of high power microwaves on different materials. Mylar is commonly used as a beam splitter or window for high frequency microwave, especially for EPR application. But at a high power, like for DNP, when using a gyrotron, it just melts. Instead of mylar, a polyethylene film is used to sample the beam. Polyethylene films make a perfect beam splitter with a ratio of 1 to 10,000 or 1 milliwatt split beam for 10 watts of forward microwave power provided by the gyrotron. This allows our pyrometer to track down the microwave power going to our sample. Finally, in order to make a 50-50 non-polarizing beam splitter, we spray painted a thin layer of silver nanoparticles on a polyethylene film. Unfortunately, when using a microwave beam power above 30 watt, the film melted due to the overheating of the silver film. Our future approach will be to use vapor deposition to improve the silver film quality and reduce the heating to make this 50-50 non-polarizing beam splitter. The MAS DNP system is now part of the user facility. That means anyone uh, around the world uh, wanting to use that system is welcome to come and visit us and use it. You have access to the instrument for free. You just pay your own travel. Uh, we have started the, this user program a, a few months ago and uh, we will now expand it with the addition of a new sweepable magnet will we'll make the system more versatile. So if you have uh, questions, uh, you can contact me, Terry Dubroca, Dubroca at magnet.fsu.edu, or Zihong Gan, uh, he's a faculty, research faculty, in charge of the uh, instrumentation in the NMR division. Thank you very much.